MaxScript is a rich scripting language which you can use to automate many tasks in 3ds Max. In this movie, we'll introduce how to move, rotate, and scale objects in MaxScript by building and animating a voxel tree. Under the MaxScript menu, click on MaxScript Listener. In the MaxScript Listener window, select Macro Recorder Enable. Now, when we manipulate Max's user interface, the corresponding MaxScript commands will be echoed in the listener. This will help us discover the commands we need as we build our script. Let's get an intuition on how to build our script by manually stacking two boxes. Notice that in the MaxScript listener, the box command is echoed twice along with several parameters including each box's length, width, and height. The move max script command moves the selected item. The currently selected item is denoted by the dollar sign. The three bracketed numbers define the movement vector from the box's current position. Parent or link the top box to the bottom box. In the max script listener, the name of the bottom box is assigned to the parent property of the top box. Given what we've just seen from the max script listener's output, we've got a good starting point for our own script. Under the max script menu, open the max script editor. We could type our new script in the interactive tab of the max script listener. However, the Max Script Editor is a more convenient place to test and run more complex scripts. We're going to incrementally build on our script, so let's begin by clearing the scene with Delete Objects. On the next line, type B1 equals box. The empty parentheses will create a default box since we're not specifying any parameters. To run the script, Press Ctrl E. Notice that the scene has been cleared and that the two previous boxes have been replaced by a single default sized box. Back in the script editor, type B2 equals box to create the second box. Type the following line to place the second box on top of the first box. Type b2.parent equals b1 to assign the bottom box as the parent of the top box. Run the script again using Ctrl E. We now have two default boxes stacked and linked in a parent-child relationship. Now, suppose we wanted to stack 20 boxes. Manually creating each box and parenting it to the previous box would be quite tedious. Likewise, it would be time-consuming to type out box 20 times and move each one. Instead, we can use a for loop to create and stack as many boxes as we want. Let's comment our previous code out in case we want to refer to it later. Two dashes will create a single line comment, while a paired slash and a star will comment multiple lines out. We'll leave the delete objects line since we want to run our script on a fresh scene every time. Type the following for loop. Since i is assigned to 0 on the first loop, the z component of the move vector is multiplied by 0, effectively keeping the first box at the scene origin. On the second loop, i is valued at 1, so the new box will be moved up by 30 units along the z-axis. On the third loop, i is valued at 2, so the new box will be moved up by 60 units, and so on. Notice that we haven't added any parent-child relationships in the for loop. To add these relationships, we'll add the following code. The first box created won't have a parent. However, the following boxes will be linked in a parent-child hierarchy. The move command operates in world coordinates, 
but we'd like to move our boxes up by 30 units relative to their parent. To do that, we'll replace the move command with the following line. The sys parent context expression tells Max that the new box's position property should be modified relative to its parent's coordinate system. By moving the box relative to its parent, we've gotten rid of the multiplication by i. Next, we'll cover how to randomly rotate our boxes around the x, y, and z axes of their parents. Use the random expression to sample a decimal number between negative 10 and 10 degrees. Instead of in chord sys, we'll use the about context expression with the rotate command to rotate the new box around its parent. We want our tree to get narrower as it grows. To do that, we'll scale each new box to be 0.95 times the size of its parent. Our tree is taking shape, but it doesn't have any branches yet. We've only got a tree trunk. In the next part, we'll cover how to add branches to our voxel tree.